So in the latest version of Smart PLS 4.1.1.5, they've come out quietly, I didn't see an announcement about this, with a feature I've been waiting for ever since they started CBSEM. You can now do multi-group invariance tests at the measurement level and the structural level. They even have examples included here. If you want to try some of theirs, just check the box for multi-group analysis. And you can see lots of examples here. I'll just use my own. So here's my CFA, not too complicated. You'll go to Calculate, and you'll notice several more features here. This used to be a very short list, but we can now use Measurement Invariance. Select that, and choose the groups you'd like to compare. I'm going to compare early and late adopters of technology. If you don't have groups set up in your data, you'll need to do that first. I have other videos showing you how to do that. But all you need to do is select the two groups you'd like to compare, keep all the defaults, and hit Start Calculation. This runs, and all you need to do is go to the Model Fit Comparison Likelihood Ratio Test. Here we have several tests for Configural, Weak, Strong, Strict, and Very Strict invariants. In order to do a multigroup analysis at the structural level, we need to pass the configural and weak tests so that we can make inferences about the structural differences, that is the path loadings, between constructs at the structural level. So the values we want to look at here are, first, the model fit of M1 configural. See the CFI is above 0.9 and the RMSEA is less than 0.1, or if you want to be strict, less than 0.06. But then we want to look at this weak column. This is equivalent to the metric invariance test. And we want to look at the p-value. This p-value is just a chi-square difference test between this constrained model and the original model. If we were to go test this with the chi-square and degrees of freedom of both models, we would see that this p-value is just that chi-square difference test. I'd like to show you that now just to verify for you. So we have a chi-square of 1,000. 0.015 for the constrained model, 1000.015 with degrees of freedom of 512, 512. And then for the configural model, we have chi square of 984, 284, and degrees of freedom of 492. We have two groups. And the p-value is 0.733, which should be exactly what we see here, 0.733. So that is just a chi-square difference test. And this means that since the p-value is greater than 0.05, that the constrained model does not have significantly worse fit than the configural model, which means the two groups have equivalent regression weights, or they have metric invariance. If you'd like to conduct stronger invariance, we have scalar invariance right here with intercepts. And again, we're looking at this p-value. If it's greater than 0.05, then we do have scalar invariance. And then you have strict and very strict invariance for other use cases. Back to this column, metric invariance. Let's say I did not achieve metric invariance. What would I do? Well, I could just go to this graphical output here. And you can notice on the left, we have some options. I want to look at the measurement standardized loadings, which is what I'm seeing right here and then just toggle back and forth between early and late on Model 2. So here's early on Model 2, here's late on Model 2. I don't know if you can see, I'm just toggling back and forth, and we can see where some big differences lie. We could also copy all of this out into another table and see if there's some major differences. Now, I don't expect major differences because I do have invariants, but we can see if we look at playful one, we have for the late group a regression weight of 0.568, and for the early group a regression weight of 0.633. If those were substantially different, I may need to constrain those to be equal and then claim partial invariance. Let me show you how to do that, but let me show you with another loading that is not already constrained. Let's do it with playful seven. So what I would do is go back, double click this line for playful seven, and force it to be equal across groups. Hit apply, and then hit run. On measurement invariance again. Same settings. It runs. 
we go look at that test. Notice the value here has changed, and the p-value has become higher, meaning they are more invariant, more likely to be invariant, and so we have partial metric invariance if we need to constrain those paths to be equal across groups. You can also take a look at the CFI difference, the delta CFI. The threshold here is 0 0.01. If there is a greater difference than 0 0.01, then that means the CFI changed from the configural model to the metric model, and it means the model fit is different. But if that value, the CFI difference, the delta CFI, is less than 0 0.01, which it is in this case, that means the model fit did not change substantially. So there is no difference, therefore we have invariance. As we move down the line here, notice that the delta CFI is comparing the configural to the weak, comparing the weak to the strong. Notice it's just 0 0.001 difference here between these two. Comparing the strong to the strict, notice 0 0.003 difference here, and comparing the strict to the extra strict or strict plus means, so 0 0.006 difference here. In general, though, we like to rely on the chi-square difference test and its p-value. And that's how you do measurement invariance in CBSEM in Smart PLS.